the Rashtrakutas. In this module, you will learn about the Rashtrakutas. The Rashtrakutas in the beginning were tributary kings of the Chalukyas and later became the rulers of a vast kingdom in the south. Some historians considered the Rashtrakuta Empire as one of the largest empires in India that took the glory of Karnataka to its peak. Their kingdom extended from the Narmada River in the north to the Kaveri River in the south. The kingdom began with Danti Durga and continued with Krishna, Govinda II, Dhruva, Govinda III, Amoga, Varsha and others. Amoga Varsha had to face many threats and obstacles, but he was a peace-loving monarch. Amoga Varsha was a brave and secular ruler. He maintained diplomacy by developing marital relations with the Gangas and the Pallavas. During his rule, the ports of the west coast enjoyed great prosperity and became trading centers, some having ties with Persia and Arabia. Many travelers and merchants visited the kingdom during this period, the most noteworthy of them being the Arab traveler Suleiman. Who praised Amoga Varsha as one of the four powerful emperors of the world? Krishna II, Indra III, and Krishna III ascended the throne after King Amoga Varsha. During the period of Karka II, the administration was weak. This led to the rise of his tributary king, Tailappa, the second of the Kalyana Chalukas and brought the end of the Rashtrakuta rule. The Rashtrakuta kingship was hereditary and they were assisted by a council of ministers like the Mahasanda Virigrahi who handled foreign affairs. The kingdom for administrative purposes was divided into Rashtras or Mandalas, Vishayas, Nadus and Gramas. The leader of the Grama was the Gramapati or Prabhu Gavunda, who was also the leader of the village army. The Gramapati was assisted by the village accountant and there were Grama Sabhas too. An official called Nadaga Wunda was appointed in the Nadus. Similar officials were appointed in the Vishayas and Rashtras. The Vishaya Pati was the officer for the Vishaya or the district and the Rashtrapati was the officer for the Rashtra. The kingdom derived its income from land revenue, toll on goods, houses, shops, tax on occupations like operating ferries and foreign trade. The Rashtrakutas encouraged Kannada and Sanskrit. Nalla Champu, the first, Champu work in Sanskrit literature was written by Trivi Karma. Amoga Varsha's court consisted of Jinasena, mathematician Mahavir Charya, Grammarian Shakatayana, Gunabhadra and Virasena. Hala Yudha wrote Kavira Hasya and Sri Vijaya wrote Kaviraja Marga. Adikavi Pampa wrote Adi Purana and Vikrama Arjuna's Vijaya in Kannada. Shanti Purana was composed by Ubayakavi Ponna. These works are very significant in Kannada literature as it shows its evolution. The prominent educational centers in those days were Agraharas and Marts. Knowledge of Sanskrit, the Vedas, astrology, logic, and the Puranas was imparted. One of the leading centers of learning was Salodgi in the Indi Taluka of Bijapur district. The Rashtrakuta kings were devotees of Shiva and Vishnu. They built many Shiva and Vishnu temples. Jainism received royal patronage and became 
a widespread religion. Other religions too were encouraged. The Rashtrakuta kings were patrons of art and their contribution to Indian art can be seen in the Elora and Elephanta cave temples. Krishna the first built the monolithic Kailashna temple at Elora. The Kailashna temple has been carved from a single rock 100 feet high, 276 feet long and 154 feet wide. The famous Dashavatara cave temple is located near it. The milestone of Rashtrakuta sculpture is seen at the Elephanta Caves near Mumbai in the form of an exquisitely carved statue of Ardhanarishwara and Mahesh Murthy. The Rashtrakuta temples are located in Shiravala. A beautiful Jain temple is located at Pattadakal. Let us now recap all the important points that we have covered in this module on the Rashtrakuta dynasty and their contributions to administration, literature and architecture.